The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Exploding down the sidelines. This is Hanging with the Boys. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton, Kurt Daniels, and Shannon Gross. Welcome to Hanging with the Boys, fellas. How are you guys doing today? Oh, I'm doing ghetto fabulous, man. I'm, I'm out there, man, doing it, big body banging, going everywhere, doing it. It's the Christmas spirit, baby, and I can't be brought down. All right, how about you? Yeah. How you doing I'm today? Feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> You're going for that NPR feel today. Well, yeah. one of our one of our listeners on Twitter over the weekend yes. had a request. He said, any chance of you not yelling to start the show? We all have to turn the volume down until you finish your childlike yelling. It's unprofessional. <laughs> what? And oh. you know what I said? This show ain't for everybody, man, but we appreciate you listening. Hell no, I can't not open a show like this, because if I don't, Kurt and Nate would fall asleep within the first five minutes. That's right. So welcome to the show. Wow, he told us he had like a, a text he had to address, but I ain't know it was gonna, uh, uh, like that. Wow. At the painful, no, we really appreciate you listening, man, and I'm sure it gets annoying as hell when I yell, but that's just what I do. Yes, sir. And, and it and it gets me into the spirit of the show, and if not, I get, like today, if I didn't yell just now, I would be so dead today because of what I witnessed <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. That was just yeah. a all around. Sometimes Nate, you just and you probably know this from playing sports your whole life. Sometimes you just get your ass kicked. <laughs> and yesterday was just an all around ass kicking. They didn't execute. They had some terrible penalties. They 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 couldn't finish drives. They it just every aspect of the game was not good. And if they weren't coming off the heels of a five game win streak, I'd be jumping off the ship again, <laughs> but I'm still on it. But I mean, it that and it was boring as hell to watch. I can put up with a, a bad game if it's fun to watch. That wasn't even fun to watch, man. That was just that was just tough all the way around. Yeah. What'd y'all think? <laughs> all right, Kurt. What'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> it was ugly. They just. It was like they. I guess they knew they had some room to play with or something. They just didn't match the intensity of the Colts. The Colts said their backs against the wall. They came out fire, and the Cowboys couldn't respond. They couldn't hang with them. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's great basketball analogy. <laughs> Wrong sport. Basketball. Yeah, that's great basketball. I mean, <laughs> er, you know, everybody. I, <sighs> what goes wrong in a game like that? What causes a game to be just <clears throat> all around ugly? Matchups. Yeah, just a bad matchup. That was a bad matchup, man. Uh, you don't think the intensity was? You thought the intensity was there? Uh, or you don't think they were? So if we look at the first half, we had we had about 19 minutes. We had 170 some yards of offense. Uh, the only thing we didn't do is punch it in in the red zone. Uh, we had to block field goal. I mean, uh, the intensity uh, one maybe favorite pitch for us, but you know, like I was telling, uh, I did a look hit for Deion Sanders uh, earlier, and uh, like I told him. I, you got to have enough guys on your team that are big game hunters, you know. And, I'd, and every week you would hear me say, boy, it's, this is just a little bit bigger. Can you hang on? And so when you don't carry that intensity and you're relying on one thing to tote you, and that's evident was our defense. We were relying on that, and it didn't happen. So now as they gain momentum, we lose momentum, so we look worse. Uh, they they beat us on both their offensive line, their defensive line. They they beat us. They dominated us. Uh, you know, we had guys in the red zone, you know, and I'm listening to people say, hey, well, the bad calls? No, sir. No, sir. Not not yesterday. You know, if you want to blame Lenahan, okay, Lenahan need to be the one coming out of the backfield catching the ball on the red zone. You need I need to be one of the offensive linemen who let a guy get a quick escape and hit your running back in the backfield. I mean, I'm looking at this game and I'm saying, nice call, bad execution. Mm. You know, uh when your quarterback can lead a tight end on a third 
the long situation, you can lead them to the outside, but you throw it up in there and put air up on it, allow the DB to run up on it and make a contested, contested 50-50 ball that shouldn't have been a 50-50 ball. Uh, I, I believe this, and I, and, and, and I know this hurt people's feelings, you know, but when I sit up here and I cheer for the Cowboys and I give them, I give them they just do, and I talk in an objective manner, even though I would never pick the Cowboys to lose, sometimes – your quarterback has to make the right throw. Sometimes your your receivers have to make the big catch. Your offensive line have to make the big block. Your defensive line have to make the big tackle. That did not happen yesterday. So for me to say the coaches, now whether whether they was prepared during the week, I don't know. But for me to sit up and say, because the dude missed a tackle in the open field, that was his to be made. And okay, so I got to tell you that Coach Rashad and Randall Nelly got to run out there and make those tackles? <laughs> Come on, brother. Nah, nah. So before I even tell you how bad the coaches did, let's look and see how bad our players did on one-on-one -on -one situations where they could have made a difference and made plays, and we didn't. Yep. And you started off the game good. If you just look at the their possessions, they had seven possessions to the Colts' eight. They started off with a 10-play drive, 15-play yes, drive, yes, sir. 14 play drive. Then it kind of went to average, 7, 6, 8, 5. This is how those drives ended. Block field goal. Thank you. Fumble. Mm-hmm. Punt, punt. Turnover on downs, turnover on downs, interception. So three, three of those you could argue were execution. Block field goal, fumble, interception at the end of the game. Especially that fumble, man. That guy was in the backfield so fast, it wasn't even funny. Mm -hmm. Down there on that fourth and one, it wasn't even funny. The play before that, the fullback. And see, this thing about it, you can blame it on Dak, you can blame it on the fullback, you can blame it on whoever you want. The ball was – the the play was there. The play was there. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to make the play. Neither made the play. Yeah. Uh, and so when I, when I look at that right there, you know – and uh, we'll have some calls, man. You can you can call in and rant and rave how you want. Like I said, I'm a fair guy. When we win, I don't stand for it. But when we when we lose, have at it. Do what you got to do. You know, but be precise in what you're saying. Now, was the play where they lined up three tight ends on the right side? Was that the same drive as when Olawale dropped it in the end zone, or was that the next? Yeah. Was that the next drive? No, it was third down. Was it Ola Ola yeah. Olawale? Yeah. yeah, drop, and then yeah, the next play, fourth and one. Which Nate, you broke that down pretty nice earlier at lunch. I don't they know. have they had like a, on the backside they had five guys and all those guys were covered. Looney had a guy to his left, and and instead of somebody saying straight straight a man man, he thought the guard the right guard was slipping with him and he didn't and he just the guy chose to swim Looney and Looney whatever went up to somebody that wasn't there and all of a sudden he comes right. Beeline to, to to Zeke. Zeke had to make his move, and when he made his move, he's trying to get that ball secure because he thought he was gonna hit him, but he got out of his way, and the next guy smashed. Him. So like Looney was doing one scheme, and the right guard Connor was doing. Yeah, he was one. doing his job. He, he was, was blocking his guy. Yeah, yeah, and see that 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 could be a lack of communication, or somebody blew a play, but uh, uh, stuff like that. That that that's momentum killers. And these guys, you know, we talked about it, and I clearly stated, I said, fellas, we cannot let them run the ball. If Make our quarterback, Andrew Luck, throw this thing 50-plus times. That way you put the ball in the air that many times, you get a chance to get some interceptions. Mm -hmm. But don't let him throw this. Check and see how many times he threw the ball yesterday. Because I told you, if this thing is balanced, we may lose this game. And boy, was it balanced. He threw the ball yeah. 27 times, completed 16 of those. They did not. They rarely got a hit on him. The middle of our offensive line, our defensive line was not effective. And so that allowed them to run our horses, our outside guys, defensive ends around the edge. You know. And then when he did run, he ran smart. I mean, he he – he did some things, man, and uh, people say, you know, well, we had a depleted offensive line. Nah, fellas, <laughs> that one don't work today. That didn't do it. Are you worried? Oh, before we 
going further, we have a special guest today in about 10 or 15 minutes. Nice. We're going to have Zach Martin's dad on the show to talk about USA football and his involvement with that. So Cool. So hang around. We'll have that. So we may may hold your calls until the last segment so we can get everything in because we want to talk about this game as much as possible before we get into that. But does this does this bother you guys at all? They won five in a row. Kurt, you said it. They kind of looked flat when they came out. Didn't really have the intensity, which, I mean, when you don't execute, I guess it can look that way. But are you guys worried? Is this is this a reset moment? Like, okay, yeah, you let's hope just they tap the brakes. This. Yeah, they, and let's go forward. Well, I, I, or is this a panic moment where you're like, we just got our butts. <laughs> we didn't put any points on the board. We didn't stop them. Should be we should we be worried about these last two games getting into the playoffs one and then continuing into the playoffs? Are you worried? I'm not worried about getting into the playoffs. I think they still, you know, the percentages are in their favor of getting there. And I, I hopefully this will like reset them, like you said. We they realize they can't just go out there and, you know, step on the field and, and win. They're not going to hand them to you, like Jones said. But uh, I. I don't know if getting very far in the playoffs is realistic, but I do think they're going to make the, see get there. They're going to make. They're going to win the divisions too. But you've always heard me say, uh, "This game is big." Okay, you lost the game that in a, in an ugly way. You got physically whooped. Mm-hmm. Okay, now 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 you know you you checking your manhood. You checking your big dog. See what you see what you're about. So now let's see what you do. Uh, I don't I don't. I'm not one of them guys even, you know, hey, hey, they started believing the Clippers. Man, forget the Clippers. They did not understand where they were and what it was about. And now you've been hit in the mouth. Now you understand what it is because this team, uh, the Colts, they understand where they're at. Mm -hmm. And they were at home and they took advantage of where they're at. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to start living for Tampa Bay. And I'm going to live only for Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, One see, game. Yeah. See, y'all allowed to live for, you know, the playoffs and this, that, and other. But, see, I tried to tell everybody who would listen, hey, man, don't worry about the Redskins. Don't worry about – excuse me, don't worry about – Who's the two teams in it? The Redskins and Eagles. Eagles. Don't worry about them. I wasn't saying that to the players. I was saying that to our fans. Mm -hmm. Quit worrying about them and focus on us, the Dallas Cowboys, because that's what Dallas is going to have to focus on. For the first time in a lot of years, in Jason Jason Garrett's era, this didn't look nice right? Mm -hmm. for our head coach. This is the game that I've been praying and secretly telling people, I don't want to see this game. Because now you give the owner a different, hmm, hmm, is this a something out of the ordinary? Uh, let's wait the next week. So now you're looking at the game not as we finna go out here and win this division. Let's see how our players play. Mm-hmm. So when you don't have no big game hunters, and I try to Who's your big game hunter? Your big game hunter is your running back. You didn't give him a chance. Your big game hunter is your wide receiver. We didn't give him a chance to take over the game. The big game hunter ain't your quarterback. Now you got to decide, is he truly a big game hunter? Because this is his third year, but we need to see when, when all else fails, and this is what I'm saying, it's hard. When all else fails, when your defense is screaming for some help and you need a big play of 20 or more yards to get down the field, we did not get it yesterday. Mm -mm. As long as we got was 18 yards, and that was from a tight end. We needed somebody to get downfield and make a play, a 20 or 30-yard play besides our running back. Your quarterback is the quickest way to get that. So here we sit. Beat up, bruised, and battered. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to see how the how the players their demeanor is in the locker room this week. Because Demarcus Lawrence said after the game they got punched in the mouth. Now it's time for them. He can't wait to go this week and punch yeah. the next opponent in the mouth. So you, this hurt a little bit. This had to be kind of a reality check. Like, hey, you won five in a row, 
And I'm sure once you get beat like that and just you you can't do anything. The reality the field. check was only on one side of the football though. See. What do you mean? Have you have y'all saw anybody do this to our defense all year? It's been a while. I mean, some guys rushed for that many yards early on it's in Seattle, I think. But have y'all really seen somebody like do that. our defense like this? No, no, no. They couldn't get to him. Not I mean, a runner. Yeah. Well, even passing. Like if you watch the game, I mean, Gluck. Didn't they have cannot the, get. You're he, right. He didn't have the best game on paper, but he was. I thought he was I was even not apart. one of them bowls. Because the way they had that bowl shaped around him, he's just standing up there, man, like a statue. I'm like, they can't even touch him. My hat's off to Antoine Woods. My hat's off to Ross. My hat's off to Tyrone, McCra- Tyrone uh, Crawford. Crawford. When he goes inside, my hat's off to Malik Collins. I, I preach that this right here. When these guys play well, our linebackers run, and they make plays all over the place. Did you hear their names at significant times yesterday? I'm talking about 55, 54, and 50. Sean Lee, uh, Jalen, and Van Der Esch. Did you hear their names at significant times yesterday? No, you did not. Why? Because those four guys inside could not get crunk up. Yeah, and you said that last week. Your linebacker play starts with your your interior linemen because they eat those blocks yes. up and don't let them get on them in the in the second level. Man, you go like I tell you, go watch the film, man. They put on a clinic on how to get to the second level, how to move people off the ball, and 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 I believe that a, that a team can be uh, on an emotional high for such a long period of time that you come down just a little bit, but the game usually can revive you to a certain extent. But I'm telling you, Quentin Nelson, Kelly, the other guard, they they, they was mashing yesterday, bro. They, they were big body banging. They was doing everything it took. Because when you can start going up the middle of a, uh, a defense. Were the, was that line that much better than our guys? I mean, were, were our guys just, it wasn't their day, you know? I take that as a yes. <laughs> was it want to or was it That's my question. something else? Want to or just talent? They just weren't as good. Quentin Nelson is a first-round pick out of Notre Dame. I think Kelly is a first or second-round pick out of Alabama. The right uh, Cast- guard. Castanzo yeah. is the left guard. Yeah, look, you got the sheet of uh, – you got the uh, last – on the back, they'll tell you where they're from, what round. No, I don't have – okay. I can look it up. But – just like the Cowboys, they have a lot of assets that they have put into their offensive line, I think so too. And and uh, Frank Wright said, you listen to the announcement, he said, man, the coach had to admit that it was his fault that they had got away from the running game. The first three games, they averaged 97 yards a game. The, uh, the, the, the running back, uh, what's his name, Milton, he averaged – like 97, now all of a sudden he's running for 47. He, the coach said, that's my fault. I have better offensive linemen than this. Let me use them to help uh, solidify my quarterback. He did it yesterday, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Antoine Woods, he ain't happy this morning. Uh, <laughs> Ross, I'm telling you, these dudes, they, these dudes probably mad at themselves because they know their best effort uh, technique wasn't there yesterday. So what what could they have done differently? Just – Execute better. Sometimes you gotta say day? root hog or die. That's it. Just grab a carpet and hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Get your claws deep in the carpet and just hold on. So they went in. They went in at halftime down ten nothing, and the defense gives up ten points in the first half. That's not the worst case ever. No, it is. But they didn't do anything in the second half. What's up with that? I mean, it's one thing to start flat, but the game was still. There and reach. That's taken. what. I'm, yes. So what didn't happen? That, I think it was a, a want to thing, and I and I also think that combined with the fact that the Colts absolutely had to win that game. Well, let's be careful with the want to word because I don't think a pro <laughs> player that, ever wants to not win, brother. 
Because you want to was a couple of times on their backs and rolled yeah, over. Right. So we don't want to say that. Right. Well, and I, you know, it depends on how literally you take yeah, it. Yeah, but, but I, I, mean, I get what you're saying. But well, they were yeah. literally rolled on their back. <laughs> so <laughs> it depends on how you want to take it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just mean, there was, to me, there was more want to in the previous five games. Hey, hey, Nate. The word is intensity, or Doug. urgency. The word or is intensity. intensity. There you yeah, go. There, there you go. My man gave it to him. I was just wondering if he's going to reach out and grab. But that want to thing has been on Doug's mind. I talked to him over in, before we had the show, and he he been want to him for a minute. Well, Nate always tells me that offensive line play, run blocking is want to. Oh, yes, it is, man. A desire to hurt. A desire to maul. So I just extrapolated that yeah. out to yeah. everybody. Yeah, I think I – think, <laughs> Want to, though, you get in that really fine area of saying guys didn't want to yeah, win. Yeah, I don't want to insult their yeah, you professional don't wanna, Yeah, because they always want to win. But, you know, intensity – hell, you won five in a row that nobody gave you a chance to win. You, you're, I don't know what the mentality is of a professional athlete, but I, I would think, you know, at some Every point – Every game they want to win. You want to win, but at some point you start buying into it like yeah. the fans do and you think, hey, we're winning out. We're going all the way and then – we have a 90% chance of winning the yeah, division. Yeah, maybe know. this is, in a way, it's never good to lose a football game in the National Football League, which I'm sure that sounded very Garrett-like. But <laughs> in a way, you're probably not winning 12 in a row to get through the Super Bowl whenever you started, what, six games ago. You probably got to lose one along the way. I'd rather lose this one and them go, okay, we got our asses handed to us. What did we do wrong? Let's fix it regroup and now let's let's go let's go the distance let's win i'd rather do it well, now than yeah. well put, four weeks yeah. from now well put, rather man. sweep the eagles which he did I, i'd rather win and win ugly and then we can fix it and keep continuing yep. on <laughs> we have a special guest about to join us well, we're we gonna take a yeah. quick break and then when we come back we will have keith martin with usa football joining us live this is zach martin's show. father is mr martin mr mr president Senior, oh, Jesus, man, come on! All right, Nate, I'll just let you host the whole rest of the show. Does that work for you? And Shannon hosting. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're hanging with the boys. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Playmaker, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The Playmaker includes four Jack Black skincare favorites, plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm and a Cowboys can cooler. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word COWBOYS. The Jack Black Playmaker, 10 bucks, free shipping. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with sideline access and photo ops with current players, alumni, and cheerleaders. That's not all, though. You'll get to talk X's and O's with Senior Director of Player Personnel, Will McClay, and, of course, with yours truly, me, Brian Broadus. You can trust the official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and with us, you'll travel like a pro. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. While a player could look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com slash football. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Back Hanging with the Boys. Hey, Kurt, nope, Kurt, you're not getting off. Just because we have special guests and you're embarrassed to read about underwear hey, hey man, quit playing in front with of your, these people. This dude back here playing with his... Come on, man. <laughs> Yeah, get on up here. Come on, yeah. Play with your phone, man. Tommy John gives you the feeling of freedom where it counts with a contour patch and nestles the boys. It's great. With over 3 million pairs sold, we put in the hustle to make sure you're nestled. Shop exclusive Cowboys underwear. Don't get nervous. TommyJohn.com. Don't get nervous. Look at Kurt. He's embarrassed. Yeah, Look Kurt, at him. Yeah, Kurt. Ah, we have his, a special guest His little here. ball head's turning red. Yeah, man. 
It's all right, Kurt. Hey, here's, 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 people. It's all right to nestle in front of men. Yeah. Your hair's <laughs> coming back nice, by the way. Thanks. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Ask, can you do that, man? Come on, man. But the only person that got rights in here that can do anything you want is this man right here. The rest of y'all ask questions. No, I'm just joking. Come on. We're going to have some fun. We are joined by... It, we, there's a lot of people in this room. Yes, room. yeah, so even we'll Ms. Just, Whitney running we'll, away. We'll take roll call. So we're <laughs> yeah. joined by Keith Martin yes. and the rest of the staff from USA Football, which you guys are in town, and we'll get to that in, in a minute. So, right. Keith, who else is who else is here in the room? Yes. It, it, it. we got Aaron Ingram. Aaron. Uh, Steve Alec. Aaron Ingram. Aaron, right there. And Gary Parker here. Okay. Steve. Steve. And Gary, yes, sir. And yep. a- AI runs our, we call him AI. Okay. And uh, he's kind of the general manager for our national team program. Cool, And man. don't let Nate push you around. He quit playing football a long time. No, I don't know. He's still he looks pretty. Uh, no. I'm <laughs> telling you, man. He still looks like he could push a few no. people around. No, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> hey, Dougie, can we get some volume on this invite down here? <laughs> yeah. We AI's just... down here just yelling and, and nobody can hear it. There we go. There you I'm go. Say, you got some what's volume. your real name, brother? Aaron. Yeah, because if I call you AI, I'm calling you Alan Iverson. I had it first. And this is more I'm older. Than practicing. I had right. it first. Okay, all right. Hey, yeah. So you guys tell us tell us what USA football is about for people that have no idea and kind of what you guys are, are doing here in town. Well, the, the first thing they do a lot of different things, mm-hmm. but but the uh, reason why we're in town, we're promoting the International Bowl, uh, which is uh, eight teams from the United States from ages 6 to 19. And they play January 11th and the 18th at AT&T Stadium. Uh, they compete against uh, countries, Canada, Japan, Mexico, and Panama um, in those dates. So it's it's an opportunity to uh, bring kids uh, from all over the country uh, to compete uh, on the international stage. It's the largest uh, international football competition in the world. Uh, most of these kids are going on to play at some level at, of colleges across the United States. Mm-hmm. So they're coming together and uh, representing the country, United States. So how did this get started, Steve? Well, well yeah, we go back to uh, 2010, uh, the first international bowl. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, one of our U.S. players, Tyron Matthew, may have yeah. heard of him. Heard of uh, that guy, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> he... Uh, so, uh, in short, um, one thing I do want to point out, so, but this goes back to uh, you know, football's growth uh, across, across the world, really. Uh, back in 2009, there were about 40 countries that played organized American football, as we know it. Now that number is fast approaching 70. And you're looking at six continents now with American football programs run by a national federation. So it's a very exciting time. And one thing I, that we see every year, and, and Aaron can speak to this as well, is um, just how excited these international kids, and they're 16 to 19, so these are high school age players, 16 to 19, of number one, they want to play the best. They want to play the Americans in our sport. So you have that. Beyond that, when you play the Americans, in Texas, that means something. And to play where America's team plays at AT&T Stadium, uh, you have just um, a football experience of a lifetime. So it's it's a really cool, um, you know, global brotherhood coming together for a shared passion for football. Very cool. And and the game, the games at AT&T Stadium wins the game. Yes, you will have a series of eight games. So we'll have four games on Friday, January 11, and then four more on Friday, January 18. Okay, and if there people aren't here, they can stream it on ESPN3, is that right? ESPN3 will stream all eight games live. Okay, and can you attend the game if you're here in town? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So as a matter of fact, then internationalbowl.com is where tickets can be bought online, internationalbowl.com. And if you enter the keyword, hanging with the boys is the best, you get free tickets. <laughs> so just... <laughs> And everyone just looked at me like I've lost my mind. That was a joke. That was a joke, everybody. Calm down. Calm down. So well, I have a question. What? How is the level of football in these other countries? I would assume the U.S. would just go out and steamroll them all. But is, is it getting better? You know, you'd be surprised. Really? You know, of course, Mexico and Canada are a lot better than most people think, too. There's big physical football. Um, Japan won last year. 
You know, oh, really? they had a great game and won. They're actually coached by a Division II coaching staff here in the United States, Oklahoma Baptist University. And then this year, Panama is new to the game for us, so we have no clue how good they are. So we're going to find out. I wonder if Paul would want to get in, how Paul could get in on this. Oh, he'd love to be. We have, a, we have a, a buddy that comes in about once every other year. He calls the show. He's from uh, Scotland. And I he like actually it. plays in a team in a league, a rec league over there that is – it's crazy how they do it. And he also coaches a, a women's team over there. So, well, I've never asked. Do, do they play in kilts? They do oh, not. I, okay. I was thinking the same thing. They wear them. But they, the same they, okay. they do not. Garrett, come over here. What? Get on this mic. We need you on this side. Hey, we need to hear from you. We haven't heard from you. Tell everybody what you do. Hey, I tell you what you do. Oh, wow. Um, I, I do all kinds of things for us, but what I do is I oversee the national team program and its day-to-day operations, all of our player selection, all of our coach selection. Um, run our regionals, which is like our feeder program that gets into it for our middle school and our high school kids. Okay. How's that determined, the, the national team? What's the process? That's the process is how it starts. Is we start off in a two-day T-shirt and shorts camp. Um, last year we ran 24 of those nationwide. Um, Dallas is always actually one of my favorite ones to go to, too. This year we'll actually be at Nolan Catholic High School out in Fort Worth. We'll have our Dallas one early in uh, early April. We'll be there. Um, we'll go from there, then we'll select them and kind of once they end that, they're in our selection pool. Nice. Did you guys go to the high school game Saturday? I didn't. I didn't. I think they had like 30,000. I know. It's crazy. It's going to be a good game this weekend, too. <laughs> yeah. Real good Definitely. one. Be back. Yeah, I mean, I'm Derek Parker. <laughs> <laughs> right. You are. Right? <laughs> Communications coordinator, so uh, new to the staff uh, under Steve's wing. But, yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. You bet. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, of course. So, we can't get too far – into this without acknowledging so we just have to let you know that your son is one of nate's favorite players on the team and he better be calls him the president <laughs> that's the nickname he has given him so yeah he, nate what makes you like zach so much and why did you come up with the president well he should be watching film on this guy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know zach tony wise my old offensive line coach went and scouted him at Notre Dame and came back and he told Jason, hey, this dude a beast. He, he's physical, he's mean, he's, he's the total package. And we already had a good offensive line. So by him coming there, man, and him doing everything right, I said, man, he the president. You know, he gonna, he gonna seal, <laughs> you know, you know, seal it for everybody. And uh, man, he's been, he's been uh, better than advertised, man. But tell us about your kid, man. What, what, growing up, how, what, what type of kid is he? I know he's serious minded when he on that yeah. field and he's oh, yeah. always, about the right things, but tell us about him growing up, sir. Yeah, he, he was always a focused kid. I, I, I coached him in middle school. I coached middle school football for 12 years. And, um, I mean, a quick story, he's always been zeroed in. I mean, one of the uh, – he played in a CYO program, mm-hmm. uh, and I can remember they have a weight limit. And um, he was about 10 pounds over and when you to, to be able to play defense on the defensive side of the ball. And I said, hey, son, that's, that's fine. You're, you're good. Let's just, you know, you'll be able to play offensive line. You'll do fine. And, you know, with, this was about five or six weeks out. And he said, no, what do I need to do? I, I want to cut weight. And, you know, I said, well, you got to, you know, you quit drinking sodas, quit, right. you know, eating those right. cookies. And literally, you know, two days before, he was a half a pound under. And that was the, and that was in fifth or sixth grade. And that's just an example. He's always kind of been zeroed, focused in on that. Uh, he was always knew what he was supposed to do, but always knew kind of what his fellow offensive linemen across the board as far as what their assignments were as well. It's very rare to have a household that has a professional athlete yes. in it or coming from that, that tree. You have two. You have two professional athletes that, that come out of your household. How, how, is, how is that to have in the league at the same time, which is really cool, just talk about that dynamic and how that is. Yeah, it, it, it is. We feel very blessed, very fortunate, because, one, they both love the game, mm-hmm. and they're both doing what they enjoy doing. Uh, for mom and dad, everybody, uh, for us, you know, by Sunday evening, if they play on Sunday afternoon, it's almost a sign of relief. Like, uh, we, we, you get involved in the emotions, the highs and the lows, because that's, you know, yeah. your kids are involved in yeah. it. You want them to stay healthy. You want them to win. And as we all know, all those things don't happen. So, uh, but it's it's been fun. It's been a fun ride. We we actually have three three boys. They all played uh, college football, 
And so we've been doing this a long time. I was I was thinking about this earlier in the day. I mean, we've been going to games for 22 years with their with their kids. I grew up in a football family. I'm the youngest of four. Uh, I can remember going to uh, see my oldest brother play when I was uh, six years old. He was 10 years older than me. So I've been going to football games for over 50 years. Wow. So, Mm -mm -mm. Did you have kind of a family reunion this weekend in Indianapolis? Yeah. Come in for the game, except Zach couldn't. Yeah, it it was interesting because we did. We had a lot of friends and so forth, but we had several people when they they found out that Zach was not going to play, they said – Hey, I don't think we're coming now since Zach's not going to play. So, hey, wait a minute. You know, you can come see us. We're still going to go to the game. <laughs> right, right. But I assume you all had fun when the Cowboys played the Texans. Yeah, I was going to say, right. what was what was the dynamic like that that game day? You know, we had 24 people uh, down for that game, and we uh, most not all, but most of us stayed at my youngest son Nick's. And it, I mean, it was fun. We 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 tried to you know just enjoy it, uh, enjoy the moment. Uh, I know when we came out, since we since most of them stayed at Nick's house, they all had their Texas gear on, and Zach came out because oh, I know how this is. You know, he was like <laughs> looking at all his uh, cousins and so forth. And uh, I said they, but when they're in Dallas, they all wear their Cowboys, uh, you know, uniforms. <laughs> nice. Yeah. He yeah. seems to him coming into the league when he did, and coming here with Travis and everything. They seem to have a really great bond and a great friendship. What what's that meant to him for? Travis to be on this team and, and be a part of, you know, kind of that friendship? Well, it's like anything. I mean, if you're going to work every day and you like people, enjoy being around them. Like me and Kurt. Well, yeah, there you go. But on and off the uh, field, it makes it easier. So I think that was um, – that was he was very fortunate coming into a situation where there were a lot of young offensive linemen, mm-hmm. a lot of you know where they have a lot of things in common, same age. You mm-hmm. know they're uh, they're uh, both married. Uh, Travis has you know two young kids. Zach's about ready to have his uh, first one, so I want to be a, a, a grand grandfather. Which oh, I'm excited about that. Awesome, Ooh. cool. So now, so out of your three sons, you. Your brothers, y'all get together on Thanksgiving, man. How many hogs y'all got a turkey? Y'all got. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, How much what, meat is on the table? table yeah, I mean, wow, man. Yeah, That's they take over the cooking. You know, now that they're older, they yeah. like their meat prepared a certain way, and okay. they think every time I'm going to burn it, Dad. <laughs> you have that. You're, all you're going you're to overcook that. So they they usually take over the grilling when when uh, we're all together. That's good. But we have a good time. We have fun. Wow. So USA football, so everyone needs to go check it out. What's something, What's if there's a fact or a tidbit or, or something that you could say that people don't know about it that's interesting or something, a little hidden gem about USA football? Wow, hidden gem. Now, we have a guy on the team wow. that played in this game. Yeah. Right? Jordan Lewis? Jordan Lewis. Is that right? That's right. How, how many years ago was that? Oh. 2013. At 05? Yeah. Five years, Five years ago. ago? Yeah. 2013. Yep. Okay. A little bit before. So there's guys from all across, you know, different colleges. They're like double A colleges and then big programs Correct. and all that. So you've got all kind of talent levels in yeah, this thing. Yeah, top right? to bottom. Okay. Yep, we cover it all. Probably Tib is like I said when we were talking about some of the international teams. You probably don't know how organized and how serious they take it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I talk to Keith about this all the time. Keith always says, "Well, is it, is it friendly?" And it's really not. It, it's yeah. a it's a game, and there's a culture, environment, and experience. They're showing up here, like Steve said, they want to win. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big deal to come to Texas, play football in Cowboy Stadium, play the Americans. It's a big deal. So the so the tidbit is. You can be 19 years old and still play in this game, right? As long as you're in just finishing your high school senior. Yeah. yeah. Depending on right certain before, states. Right before you go to college, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. You can still attend yeah. college. Correct. So if you if you are uh, a late bloomer mm-hmm. and you probably don't have a college, yeah. th- this is a great chance on. to showcase. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Big time. So, Last year, uh, locally, a kid who's actually at UT now, right. Brian Hobbs, had a really right. good game for us. Linebacker played a great game. 
So, you know, you, man, just whenever you get a chance to showcase, that's what it's all about. Let people see who you are, man. And then it helps grow y'all's sport, too, because now y'all can use his name yeah. to uh, expand who you are. We're thinking about suing you up. Mar- he should know that as a marketing guy. I am, but you're doing such a great job. I'm letting you get outside your comfort zone. <laughs> We're going to suit uh, you up, Nate. Yeah, That's what we want. No, nah, brother. <laughs> I would, say, I would <laughs> say the other thing on USA football, just to kind of interject here, other than the national mm. teams, uh, we have a lot of resources for, for coaches, both high school. Yes, and you do. Yes, you do. And one of the reasons, I've only been on board for about 10 months. I spent mm. most of my career at the NCAA for 29 years. Right. And uh, – one of the, the reasons why I came over is uh, the challenges in the sport, particularly the headlines and so forth. And, and USA Football has done a nice job of putting resources out there. We're, we're putting together a football development model uh, that looks at uh, practice planning. What, what are the things that should be taught at what ages? How to proper you know, tackle, blocking, all those things that resources that we have available. And we have a council that's on our council. We have football subject matter experts. We have medical experts. Anquan Bolden's on our good on our council. Good man. Good, yeah, a good man. And I helped recruit him. Yeah. So, uh, good man. so anyway, we th- this is uh, this is important stuff because we want to see football, you know, as far as prosper, you know, for years to come. You know, th- I have to say this. Can you tell people? Uh, and this is my personal thing. Up until you're 12 or 13 years old, this is where I, I don't like a lot of young coaches, is the emphasis is on winning and not technique. And I hate that. You're spot on. This is what this that. is what a football development model, it's about a framework. Yes. And it's about skill development. Every other sport, basketball, baseball, has gone this direction. And soccer. Yes. The reason why one of the things that studies that, that we looked at is the reason why we can't make the, the American Cup in soccer is because we focus too much on games and not yes. skill development. That's right. And it's the same way with football. We, we need to get back down, back to the, the football development skills, proper technique, blocking and tackling, and don't worry about winning games at yes. such an early age. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy because here in the States – Football is number one and has been number one as far as you can go back recent memory, right? But right. other places in the world, like football is fairly new. And, and there's the fan base is growing like crazy, especially like over in the U.K. We're seeing that. Brazil, Germany, like the game's getting – they've always had soccer. That's been, you know, That's forever. That's still the number one beast, yeah. But this is really cool that you – this this is expanding and tapping into – organize football in other other countries and other areas because it's you know it's it's really cool and i think football is going to eventually become global but here in the states you you think it's global just because that's all we've ever known but it's really just starting to start to grow and kind of get out there so this is really cool what you got over there got some presents for you guys that's what i'm talking about <laughs> no? nate loves presents what is this man that's a good looking hat it's a good looking game day hat. official this year for you guys wow. man i like you know, this i appreciate it man i just nice. sir if y'all could just get that out there man that no, technique, i appreciate that i just i just i, I watch so i go to hey, we would love to have you on a yeah. po- one of our podcasts <laughs> hey, just to talk yeah. about that okay oh, yeah. yeah i mean no yeah. I'm, I'm serious we would love to have you on there because i i think Hearing it from people that have played the game yes. you know, at the highest level, I think resonates. So, because the quickest game. way to teach a person to keep their head out of a tackle is what when they seven, eight years old, you start teaching them. Then, when now it becomes just reflex when they get to a, a higher level. Yeah, you know, I believe that. I, I got to believe that because I had sons like you that came through. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys stopping by. I'm sure y'all have a little whirlwind of a of a tour while you're here in town. But we appreciate. it. I have a question for you. When you grew up, because I have a I have a my first name Shannon, my last name's Gross, so I always got my made up, you know, made fun of. My middle name's Payne. People always call you like a smart Alec, a Steve <laughs> Alec. Yeah, I, I do get some of that, Shannon. Uh, although I'm proud, actually, one person who made fun of me that way, uh, Marvin Lewis. Oh yeah, I had Marvin uh, coached Lewis a yeah. number of years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that was uh, a, a quip straight from him. So okay. you and Marvin Lewis. Oh, we're the same. Alike. See, we exactly. think exactly. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll take that. 
I will definitely take that. Well, thank you, okay, guys. Well, both of y'all can go discuss that in the hall, man. We got more important things. <laughs> okay, fine, Nate. Whatever. Yo, thanks names, for ruining man. my fun. <laughs> Keith, thanks. Win, right? Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. AI, appreciate it. Thank thanks you. for stopping thank by. Thanks so much. Garrick, thank you. Thanks Whitney, thanks for bringing everybody. AI. We're going to take thank a quick you, break. We'll take some phone calls, thank and we'll Steve, be right back. Alec. Oh, and hang with the boys. You like me and you love. I mean, if you have a... Hi thing then cutting the cord is scary but then i found out i could switch to direct tv now and still get the live sports i love no satellite needed no bulky hardware no annual contract just get the live sports you love try direct tv now for ten dollars a month for three months visit direct tv now.com direct tv now more for your thing that's our thing use code real deal limited time price for a little, little package after three months renews monthly at full price currently minimum forty dollars unless canceled prices may change new subscribers only cancel anytime content varies by package and may be limited restrictions apply it's time for tailgating with the otterbox boys otterbox the overprotected phone case company yep and they've got an essential tool for your next tailgate party the bear resistant venture cooler now wait in all my tailgating days i've never seen bears tackling brats on the blacktop and you never will because a venture cooler with a locking kit is basically bear repellent can't wait to try it out at my next tailgate that's been tailgating with the otterbox boys visit otterbox.com to learn more about their certified bear resistant venture coolers you want the most interesting up to the minute dallas cowboys news straight from the star in frisco how about exclusive and on command that's right news and nuggets you can't find anywhere else with our exclusive cowboys content on alexa you can have all the answers secrets stories and more what's stephen jones thinking during a game what's joe looney's favorite pregame meal we take your questions to cowboys players and coaches and you can hear the answers directly back to you just say alexa open dallas cowboys now's a good time to tell you that seat geek is the new source of tickets for all your football needs Needs this season. SeatGeek makes managing tickets easy, whether it's buying or transferring to a friend. They even tell you the best deals for every game based on their deal score technology, which rates every seat on historical data, price, and location. Download the SeatGeek app on your phone and take $20 off your first purchase using code DALLAS at checkout. SeatGeek, life's an event. We have the tickets. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Back to hanging with the boys. Name your time. Hanging with the boys, man, that was cool. Keith Martin, Zach's dad. Yeah. Mr. Cool. Martin, Zach's dad. Mr. Martin. Oh Jesus, man! Now, did you tell him? Did we tell him the, the president? That was his nickname. I never heard that. That's he missed a whole, almost a whole set. Have you never heard? Did yeah. you say you called him the we, president? We talked about. You over there flipping through porn or something on your <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. President's <laughs> Fajer. Oh, oh I my heard God. all that talk. I didn't hear the president. Oh you my God. It's like everything else. You don't pay attention. You're over there looking what? up Mrs. Her? stats that you know. Oh, my God. All right. I heard y'all talked about boxing Get him, last Kurt, Friday. Not right? let that yes. ride. Spence versus God. Garcia. IBF welterweight champion Errol Spence Jr. is set to defend his title against four <laughs> division world champion and current WBC lightweight champion Mickey Garcia on March the 16th at AT&T Stadium. You don't want to miss this highly anticipated blockbuster showdown. Tickets are on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. Are y'all really, I really thought I would have played this by now because I anticipated Shannon being in this mood. I'm a pretty senorita waiting for me down in old Mexico. Wow. Hey, he's, he's calling you out. You see how he's smiling, too? <laughs> you see how he's smiling? Yeah. So you know what's on his mind, yeah. right, Kurt? Lent yeah. in that Shannon eye. Yeah. Super Bowl, Super Bowl is on my mind. I ain't got no time for the Mexico Santa, yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Play, that, play that again. I bet you can't stop from smiling. Play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Look at him. Man. It's in his eyes, dog. Just look at him crazy in his eyes. Yep. <laughs> it's in his eyes. He tried not to smile. Oh, hey, I got a good story Pretty for y'all. Senior. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is it's from the involves senoritas and no. the beach. This involves a uh, porn. No. <laughs> porn to you, Kurt. <laughs> That's why your hair fell out. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
instead of your sight going bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, no, hey. <laughs> I'm the married well, one. You're the one that's hey. single living it by yourself. True, true. Okay, so here's a cool story. All right. So we're setting up this weekend to do a – Carrie Lofton has been working – the uh, Eagles fan that man, that man been working hard. Oh, he been working Ooh, so hard. Wow, he putting some work. So we have a feature we're doing for American Airlines called uh, "Going uh, Flying Home." It was going to be with uh, Jalen and Rod Smith about them going back and playing in Indiana for the first time as pros. Um, so we Carrie interviewed them last week, and then we had uh, we were coordinating with uh, uh, Jalen and uh, Rod's dad to um, to shoot this video. And um, interview him and get some stuff with him whenever we got to um, uh, Indianapolis. So we're working with him and everything, and I call him uh, to get him to get him uh, lined up. I'm saying um a lot, man. It's okay. I'm it's sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Quit looking at your phone, and you probably could get to it get out. This lined up. Yeah. So I call him. And we're at the That's hotel. She said. I say, hey, hey. He's right. like, who is this? I'm like. Uh, this is Shannon Grossman with the Dallas Cowboys, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I got a lot of people that call my phone. You know, sorry if I was rude. And I was like, hey, I, I get it. I don't even answer my phone if I don't recognize the number. There's Carrie right there. How you doing, Carrie? Carrie? All right, all right. Keep working. Keep grinding. How and, about them, Cowboys? And uh, so we talk, and we're setting everything up, and he's coming to the game. I said, text me when you get there. We'll make sure we get you on the sideline. We're going to film some stuff. He's like, all right, we'll do, we'll do. Thanks, appreciate it. Super nice guy, um, Roger Smith. And then about an hour later, my phone rings, and it's his number, and I pick it up, and I'm like, I was like, hello? And he's like, hey, is this Shannon? I was like, I was like, yes, sir. And he's like, is this? So you, I'm putting my, your phone number in my, in my phone, and I went to save it, and you said Shannon Gross, right? And I said, yes, sir. And he goes, is this the same Shannon that hosts the show with Nate? And I'm like, yes, sir, it is. He's like, that's my show, man. That's my show. I listen to y'all all the time. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. So we are the official show of the family members of the Dallas Cowboys. I guess so. So he wanted me to tell you, hi, Nate, that he loves you. Kurt, he said he, he's, he his thoughts and prayers. He said you by name. <laughs> you know what, and man? said, Kurt, his thoughts and prayers Thank are with you. you and he's Smith. pulling for you. He said, Douglas, go to hell. <laughs> well damn i'm just kidding he did not say that douglas but he listens to the show thank you and said this this is his favorite show that we have on on dallascowboys.com That's so good. i thought i would show I, I, I would like to think that know, was cool i would like to think that uh um, sorry i said um so much at the beginning <laughs> no nah, because you was on the phone. Multitask, you know what man you know it's all right because like i said i, I forgive everybody and they little uh blunders because you talking about I can mispronounce the names? Mm -hmm. you, you looking at it. You and my mom. Oh, my you God. and Mama I, I was, Yeah, I would tap a name. And I've had <laughs> players call me and say, hey, man, this is how you pronounce my name. And they'll send it to me, text how you can chop it up and uh -huh. pronounce it. And you still mess it <laughs> up? I still mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, thank you, forgive me ahead of time. Yep, but I thought that was really cool. And uh, as I'm talking to him on the sidelines, getting some things set up, um, a gentleman – leans over to me because you think we're winning today i was like yeah you know I, you know hindsight's 2020 i was like yeah, yeah. i was like it's not gonna be tough this, this is a good team i think people are underselling them i said but I, I think i think they're gonna win see that see that i knew the doubt was coming oh, in that's how we go well, we don't want to undersell them. here we go Shannon's fault. anyway yeah. ba -ding, ba -ding, ba -ding. talk show talk show anyway there's a call it was a gentleman wearing a number 50 throwback Sean Lee jersey and right. it just so happened to be Sean Lee's father. Oh, there you go. So wow. his his mother and father actually drove in from from Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. Drove over 5 hours to go to the game or going to the game. It's a Notre Dame territory. And then turning around and driving straight back, not even spending the night. And they're just like what I would expect Sean Lee's parents to be, the nicest Sweetest. Well, man who's the nicest? Woman? I thought you said the nicest family was uh, our tight end. They're family. all nice. Look at you hobnobbing with the hobnobbing folk. with all the all family the important members. folk. So we've got. So hanging. so where did Jalen father fit in? And all of he's those the guys? nicest too. They're all equally nice. <laughs> <laughs> they are all the nicest people I have ever met. Are they nice? Well, Mama Gross can't be nice dealing with you every day. You ran off. You know, you I made her hang up hang on up you. On Depends you. on wow. what day of the week it is. Jeez. She's a lady. There you go, Reginald. Do Damn. we really have a call, Douglas? 
Yeah, the same one <laughs> that James. I gave you two minutes into the show. Well, what's funny is you said that, and we didn't even hear we didn't even hear it in here. It sounded like oh, you were okay. talking to somebody in the room. So, well, I well who, who is this person? That's that's debate on this person. Who, who it are is? They? Are you wanting to guess? Or you want me to no, tell just, you? No, tell us who it is, and then what do they want to talk about? Well, it's James in New York City, and I'll let him tell you what he wants. to New talk. York City. Come on, Nate. We talk all the time. I want to talk about how great you are. <laughs> No, nah, no. Nah. Talk know. about the nah, game. Let's talk about the, <laughs> the resiliency yeah. of you for staying game. on the phone yeah, for man. an hour, we're man. Tough. Sorry, we didn't hear. We didn't hear Douglas tell us we you had. Must heard one of the Jason I mean, Garrett adversity was, speeches. That morning, then you know, I guess we just definitely talked about the fundamentals because I used to coach at that level football too, and I asked the coach, like, "What is your? Why are you guys so good?" He goes, "We just know how to block. We know how to tackle." So he's, yeah. he's spot on with that, you know. But anyway, it's about the game itself. I mean, this is my take on the game and my concern. I mean, I'm not even sweating the game. I mean, you can see it. You can feel it. it was kind of like that letdown after, like, the big Saints and Eagles game. Um, you know, clearly the intensity level, Colts needed that game more. I think it's one of those mulligan games that you just chalk it up, refocus, reset. I'm with, I'm with, I'm with that uh, opinion on the game. I mean, Nate, I've seen even your Super Bowl teams. You know, you, once in a while you just get one of those games, and the next game is the one that will tell you, is this team for real or is it not? What do you think? But, do, you, do you think this team's for real or are they not? I think their defense is for real. I think their offense, when it's executing, like Nate said, that's another thing. They didn't execute yesterday. You know, those missed throws that we got away with in the Saints and in the Eagles game and those turnovers that came to bite us. So that's what, to me, that's what they got to clean up on. They got to execute and they got to take advantage. You can't have drops in the red zone. You can't have holdings on third down. Like that, that, that stuff can kill you in big games. But my concern is, though, is when we lost our backup uh, left guard, and, you know, a lot of times these teams, what separates them is their depth. And now we're dipping into the third string guys, the fourth string guys. And, you know, we play without Travis Frederick the whole year now. And Tyron, let's face it, he's not the same guy. I mean, he's given him everything he's gotten. I love the guy, but he's not the same player. And when you lose Zach Martin, you know, not playing this game, now that's what I'm looking at right now. That offensive line is in a lot of trouble if Zach's not out there. And if you lose your backup left guard, I mean, man, it's hard to compete. I mean, you could see it. You know, that pass rush was getting to Dak. You know, he gets sacked. What, he's getting sacked like four, five, six times a game. You lead know? the league so with, like with 50. We lead yeah, the league with 50, and, right? Sacks? No, yes, sir. Second, but it's like the, yeah. I mean, first, second. Like like the when, they get, when you're getting beat like that, when you're getting beat up like that right now, yeah. I don't think Dak really cares. It's only like the <laughs> seventh time <laughs> in <laughs> history that they've given up 50 sacks. Those guys. Those are drive killers, man. You yeah. know, when you got an experienced guys, you no, know, now you're going against when you hit the playoffs, you're going against teams. You're going against their you're going against the best players, you know. And I like to hear what because Nate, you played the offensive line. I mean, imagine imagine you were missing three guys on the line. I mean, how would you guys like what what would an offensive line do, you know, in on the fly to help be like, listen, we like what what, what would what would be like you're at if you were playing with them right now? Uh what are you saying now? What I'm saying is like, how attention you to get on me. On the team? Please, please mark that. <laughs> please mark. No, nah, I, I heard. What he, I heard what he said because evidently he 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 said he a cowboy fan. How long have you been a cowboy fan? I've been a cowboy fan since I was nine. So I was 1992. It was the first run. The first okay, yeah. I ever saw you guys oh, okay. Play, I you forgive you then because you missed them 11 sacks we gave up against Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, I said. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it, Nobody likes football in my family, so we don't watch uh, nothing. That's okay, yeah. The Giants and the Jets. I saw you guys on TV once. Yeah. I was a fan for life. Swear, swear I'm everything. Yeah, I'm, okay, yeah. So I, I, I pretended like I ain't hearing him. But I'm like, he must have seen the 11 seconds he gave <laughs> it, think, it. It could yeah, be ugly for him. Yeah, you watch the highlights and stuff like that. Yeah. We had the Eagles game. But, yeah. you, know, I'm, you know, I was lucky. You know, I got into it right, right when it got sweet. So, yeah. you know, but, but I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you're an experienced guy. I mean, does that, it's got to concern all three of you guys, no? That offensive line, that depth? I mean, that's... Yeah, depth. Uh, Back in the day, we didn't worry about depth because guys weren't being signed on the salary cap. Everything was open. And now this salary cap really constricts you. So, you know, you have to be how many you can dress for a game and, you know, and stuff like that. And and as soon as we lost Zach Martin, it would have became... Uh, not Zach, excuse me. As soon as we lost... Uh, Frederick, I'd have been concerned. And whereas we had 18 wide receivers, I'd have had 18 offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Yeah. Well, thanks for the call, man. Thanks for holding on. Thanks for listening, as always. We appreciate you, brother. 
Thanks, guys. You guys are the best, man. You're my God favorite bless. show, too, on the, on the whole uh, website. Oh, we appreciate it, man. Thank you. Just make the show two hours longer, though. <laughs> oh no oh no no i can't handle hanging out with these two dudes for see two if hours. i had kurt hosting and me and him planning the show we probably could do a two-hour show easy but when it's shannon and you never know where it's going <laughs> yeah, I, man. Keeps it that can be bad that can be bad for your heart we we do a two-hour show we just do an hour in the lunchroom and an hour that's true hour that's, in here. that's what we need to broadcast our lunch <laughs> no we do not need to broadcast that i <laughs> like not, my job yeah the honesty we bring there will get us fired i like my job well thanks kurt for showing up thank you thanks to usa football man these nice usa football hey, u.s national team Steve hats Alec, I a and the communication guy mr martin yeah man thank you guys for stopping by nate thanks for bringing it as always douglas Thanks for trying to screw the show up and not being <laughs> successful again. Boom! <laughs> he said, "You know what? You know what, man? I can't understand how Derek Eagleton, the boss of all of this, tried to hijack the show. Hijack our show, That's man. Why we knowing, started late. Yeah, knowing that we're award-winning. I mean, wow. You would think he would want his people to be successful. Yeah, man. Put you in the proper place to win, Just man. Trying to put the man down. That's right. <sighs> but maybe because we got physically, since they got physically beat up yesterday, they they probably. <sighs> well, Amber Garcia, you got to at least kick the ball higher than in the man uh, armpit. Armpit. Yes. We hey, let's just <laughs> let's take a bunch of calls tomorrow. Let's yeah. let people vent. Yeah, since we couldn't man. Get to wow. Them today. We'll, oh, I love it. We'll take your butts. We'll take your pissed offness. Easy there. Your we'll take your. Is this – should we worry about this? I'm mama, a, you think Mama Gross – I'm having Mrs. a hard time with words today. I don't know right. what's going on. And I am and I didn't even okay. go out last I night. I think you had a – I'm beginning to think you had a rough Saturday night. It really did. Yeah. No. You said you almost fell asleep during the game. We went to tired. we went to dinner and I fell ate so much. Put me in a food coma and mm-hmm. we didn't even really go out and party for Dave's birthday. Mm-hmm. Kent, thanks for doing what you do. Presley, thank you for scheduling everything. We will be back taking your calls. All right, Ms. Whitney. Tomorrow. Thank you, Whitney, for bringing all the USA football folks by. Tomorrow. Hang it with the boys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!